Africa is a continent rich with opportunity. And when business and communities come together, its astonishing potential begins to be felt. With the Millennium Development Goals steering these partnerships, Africa's future is being rewritten with innovation, foresight, and inclusivity. Crossing the length and breadth of the continent, our journalists uncover these stories and share them with the world. Join us now for remarkable stories of partnerships across Africa, building the future and changing lives. It's Africa's time. Addis Ababa usher in the day, rising long before the sun and lining the streets to sell candles for early morning prayers or the first injera for breakfast. In the sub-city of Lideta, Tirawok Abebe is doing what she's done for years, managing a team of women who clean the city streets. <laughs> Good Good morning, Teru. Good morning. <laughs> How are you, ladies? I'm fine. So this is your work, yeah? But I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Yes. <laughs> Across the city in Kirokos, another single mother, Koraj Demeke, readies her children for school before starting her working day. Both Tirawak and Korach are part of a global campaign to unlock the economic potential of women. The Coca-Cola Company's 5x20 project, which will empower 5 million women across the world by 2020 through entrepreneurship training and illustrate what's possible when new skills and self-belief combine. <laughs> ያውሳው <laughs> Korach's reality, along with women from all walks of life, is starting to shift as the project engages with local NGOs, government and the business sector. Working with small businesses from waste recycling to retailing, it empowers participants in their workplace and aims to reach over 25,000 women in Ethiopia by 2020. So together with the stakeholder partners, this was an area that was identified. Yeah. Why? People are located around here, needs really support needs upliftment and economic empowerment. So this place, I've got lots of plenty of opportunities and potentials from the women perspective because their dedication, they have got a commitment, they are so energetic and the project is designed to empower uh, petty traders basically and government is giving the license to operate, giving a space to work with. Uh, we're doing the business skill, we're giving them some assets to start with, we give them coolers, or ice boxes, umbrellas, openers, rack displays, some crates of products because they don't have any capital to start with. 
if they are given some small support, they could have made big changes and improvement in their lives. We've seen that literally moving from being a, a person who's selling on the side of the street to having a store like Korach. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, she's getting, I mean, double income in a daily basis due to uh, the, 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 the engagement and the interventions of this project. AOB Culture founded an NGO that provides 5x20 business training to women like Korach. Partnering with Coca-Cola East Africa Bottling, they are rolling out the practical skills essential for lasting change. We first did assessment on the women. They were doing their business, but they didn't know the strategies. So we brought them together. Each group has 20. Then they form an association where they can learn from each other, they can work together, they can borrow from you know the, the association. So after we did this, we trained them on investment, we trained them on saving and you know relationship, communication and, and market networks and things like that. When you empower a woman in, in a family, you empower the whole family. Because in our culture, women are very much important to change, to transform, and to make a difference in, in a family life. And, and we believe that when we empower the woman, we are empowering the family, the community, and the nation. My name is Rose Muevaza. I work for the UNDP Regional Office for Africa as the advisor on women's economic empowerment. I think this is a, a great time to talk about women's economic empowerment in Ethiopia because what is interesting to watch is that as Ethiopia is developing, women are visible in this process. A lot of the women on the streets and on the pavements are trading out of necessity to provide for their families. So how do we get women who are naturally entrepreneurial to moving from doing business by necessity to becoming actual business women? And this you can provide through training and skills enhancement and networking and helping those women you know, to come together because that is also very important for empowerment. Tiruak has grown her own business, and she and her team have joined an association that can now access the benefits of the project, which include training, as well as safety materials and a guaranteed relationship with recycling company Nampak. So it's been a whole morning of collecting. <laughs> Dollar, <laughs> 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 East African Bottling Company Garsi in Sarayna Baro. We bagara kam in Sarat Chosro. Chinya ba katama daraja. We de sedis matu arat mahabarat alun. Training must at which charilem training kasa to bohala. The nazi mahabarat damo safety materials and then ye ijiguant manager to touch amande mi amwalu. Ihen ye sedas sara mangis bichaun sartoni asake mi chulo idelam. Katama u ye safa valabat niye ta ibrasa u vazi sarayi masata valabat. Modo sarano. Africa <laughs> Lujucha, 
እና እናቴ በጣም ጠንካራ ናት እንደ ወንድ ነው የምትሰራው እንደ ሴት ሳይሆን ቼንጂ ምን ነው ቤቲ ቁጭ ማለት አሉት ልብስ ስፌት ተሰፋለው እጅ ስራ ሰራለው ሸጣለው ጠቀማለው ማሃበሬን አስተምራለው ማሃበሬ ይሰራል ራስ ማሃበሩ ይሰራል ስለዚህ የፈጠራ ስራ የማሃበሩ ጭምር ነው ኮካ ስልጣና ሰጥቶና በጣም ሰፊ ስልጣና እና ያ ስልጣና ለኛ ደግሞ የበለጠ የበለጠ እንድንጠናከ የበለጠ እንድናውቅ ብዙ ነገሮችን እንድንረዳ አድርጎናል ቆሻሻ ሀብት ንብረት ነው በጣም ትልቅ ደረጃ መድረስ ይቻላል በቆሻሻ I think one of the most important uh, components of the concept of empowerment is the linkage to the concept of human dignity the dignity that comes from being productive and uh, these women once they've uh, been able to produce anything and they are able to market it or vend it it improves their self-worth it improves their sense of dignity and not only them but also their families the metadelun yaltachawch yaddo kin biye masibet geze yelleny still scaun edmi dress maletno qatam yichallech tishechallech tetabiqeyellech ani tenant na kanati ga hunyi ezaga gulitun bemenegir saat lay misachinen enkwan sinbela andi fitachin mazuran neber menbelo zari ahun bijochi ketimirti simetu ezi bit adellem metu tezanem mulo beka mata nem gabo ሲመጡ እዛች ውስጥ ሆነ ጥላ ላይ ቁጭ ብሎ መብላታቸው ለኔ አፍቀለቀ ለውጥ ነው ነገር ደሞ ከሰራው እንደሞ ትልልቅ ነገር ነው ምንኛ ስለዚህ ለኔ ተለውጫለሁ ነው ምን ከትላንትና ህይወቴ ማለት ነው አሁን ችርቻሮ ነው የምሰራው ቀጣይ ደሞ አከፋፋይ ሆነና በቃ ግብይን መታወት ማለት ነው እሷን ደሞ አንድ ቀን ግብ መታለው ነው ምን The Coca-Cola 5x20 project is giving the women of Ethiopia the practical framework to improve their lives Using new skills and latent strengths, they are shaping the future for themselves and their families and celebrating the fact that life will never be the same again. Zimbabwe has faced many challenges and sustainable partnerships are crucial to its economic growth. Boleslav Stawiki from the Africa Enterprise Challenge Fund met with us in Bulawayo to lead us into this all important story. If you look around in the city of Bulawayo, um, it may seem as if the city is doing quite all right, but in fact Zimbabwe is one of the most impoverished places in the world and uh, we believe that uh, making a difference here through our investments and through the implementation of inclusive business models we can make uh, a huge difference for the local communities one of the businesses AECF is partnering with is Sondalani Ranching a company that's determined to draw as many Zimbabweans as possible back onto the land I'm Peter Cunningham uh, the uh, CEO of Sondalani Ranching um, <clears throat> and we're an agro processing company doing uh, value chains um, from inputs to to uh final product i wanted to become a farmer from when i was quite young then my mother gave me 50 chicks for my birthday when i was 8 years old so we grew those chicks and then sold them uh, bought 70 then sold those bought 90 and then through our school years uh, basically grew the business up to where we are now maybe you can tell one of your greatest lessons that you've got at college i've learned that girls are young ladies if you want to pick a chick this is how you do it you want to pick up chicks this yes. is how you do it <laughs> my brother joined me in 1992 uh, and we used to put aside a percentage of our profits to 
uh, help uh, small scale farmers and to try and break poverty. Uh, my brother came and, uh, and he was very excited and he said, Peter, I'm seeing a whole different view of Africa. These aren't poor people in a poor continent. These are rich people in a rich continent. We need to include them in our business and put them into our value chain. Uh, we're focusing on unlocking uh, the agricultural potential of, uh, of Africa um, at the moment with foundations and chickens and uh, intensive vegetable production, uh, which allows small scale farmers to be able to produce uh, effective volumes on small areas of land. So Sundalani is a company which engages smallholder farmer community around uh, Bulawayo in Western Zimbabwe. Their objective was to, uh, to add value to their operations uh, by uh, starting processing the crops they are getting from the smallholder farmers, which would not only be beneficial for the company but also for the smallholder farmer. We would sell chicks uh, and feed to the farmers and then buy back the birds just before slaughter. We also started to bring in tomatoes into the business. Uh, tomatoes are a very intensive crop. They need very high attention to detail, um, which is exactly what our farmers were good at. We had, uh, in our first years, some bumper crops. So we ended up with uh, uh, hundreds of tons of tomatoes that we couldn't do anything with. We saw the opportunity with, to partner together with ACF to provide a processing plant that could then give a floor price or guarantee to take the tomatoes off the market, uh, which would give confidence for people to produce and to really move. So the uh, Africa Enterprise uh, Challenge Fund is a development fund which uh, invests in uh, profit-making, uh, small and medium-sized innovative enterprises across Sub-Sahara. Our investments uh, typically consist of two different components. One of them is a uh, non-repayable grant, uh, subsidy you could say, and uh, the second component is, a, uh, is an interest-free loan. AECF has co-funded the building of a tomato paste plant here within the company's existing chicken feed facility. It's the perfect supply destination for thousands of outgrowers whose businesses will expand alongside Peter's. The plant is designed to do 150 tons a day of uh, tomatoes. Um, <clears throat> uh, and as you can see, there's a steriliser outside, there's the pumps, there's the vacuum uh, chambers, uh, there's the stainless steel uh, tanks that will be a part of the process. It's been a really exciting journey, both for us as a company, but also exciting for our farmers because it's allowed us to go to them and say, guys, you can produce as much as you want and we can guarantee to take the uh, product uh, off you. You should have come out that way, brother. Hey, Bollock on the farm. <laughs> in tomatoes you get a very high yield from a very small area of land, uh, which helps uh, farmers who have got small uh, plots. The prices are stable or do yeah. they fluctuate a lot? <clears throat> the prices go up and down. Uh, right. tremendously during the season uh, and that's one of the advantages of having a, a plant that can take out the bottom end of the market when oh. it uh, crashes it. Excellent. But there's more to the story and we're traveling south with Peter to the famous Matobo Hills where Sondalani has founded an agricultural college. It's developing a generation of young agri-entrepreneurs who will eventually supply to Peter and whomever else they choose. As, as we remodeled our company onto an agro-processing uh, uh, value chain business, what we saw is that the, the greatest investment that we could make was in human capital. That we no longer needed to invest in land, we needed to invest in people. Um, and as a result of that, uh, we developed Ebenezer College. We are going to pick two fields. We want to pick 7.5 by 7. Ebenezer is a vocational college. Uh, the apprentices uh, do four hours a day of uh, uh, study and academic work, and then eight hours a day of infield work. Uh, each apprentice has his own farm, sets up his own mini business, um, and uh, we, we invest in that. So that we put in the money, they put in the work, and they come out of there uh, with a real vision of what Africa can be, of what their lives can be. Who can come and show us how to pick a maize field? Princess. 
Peter is the heart of unlocking poverty in Zimbabwe and in Africa. So the one thing that I like about him, he, he, he always has new ideas. He also has got an, a heart in dealing with people individually. He can, he can point the potential in you. A wonderful couple that have come through Ebenezer is uh, Honest and uh, More Blessing Matabiri. Um, both of them were uh, apprentices in our first uh, years and uh, through that developed a real heart and passion for what they could be and what, uh, how they could help uh, other people. I love my husband <laughs> because he is loving me too. We work together to our garden, go and fetch water, go and, and fetch firewood to cook and then we come back cook together. When I, I saw her, I feel happy and that's why we fall in love at Ebenezer. The couple's work is to engage with farmers in their community, to encourage them to move beyond subsistence and become suppliers. I'm a field officer. I'm visiting them every day, checking how the chicken's doing. Uh, are they sick? Are they coughing? Are they dying? Helping them with uh, uh, a technique thing like solar light and tubing feeders. One of the farmers that uh, Honest and Moby are supporting is Elizabeth Mwali, uh, who is a widow of, uh, uh, in her 80s, uh, so who had nine orphans in her village and um, really had no real way of sustaining things. And she's turned that around to where she's got one of the most profitable uh, ventures and where she's growing and expanding her business. I'm visiting Elizabeth each and every day of the week, looking after her chickens and then weighing her chickens, seeing how much grams do they gain. Yeah, if they are low, I can encourage them to feed them. I feel like it's good because it's putting light to the old ladies. They were not thinking about something that is going to help them. Elizabeth's plan is to use profits from chickens to farm tomatoes for processing at Sondolani's Bulawayo plant, which AECF helped fund. It's all part of a greater plan for her children's future. So $1,000 Elizabeth is being supported by Honest and More Blessing to complement her chicken business with tomato farming and to earn even more. When they do chicken, they use that manure uh, for growing uh, tomatoes and maize. So people talk about a win-win. We talk about a win-win-win, which means that the farmers can win because they can have guaranteed markets, they can really move and, uh, and unlock stuff. Uh, we win as a business because uh, we're getting fast turnover of our cash uh, and we're getting scale, scalability and volume that we wouldn't have got uh, otherwise. And the customers win because one of our uh, ethos is that we must get the best value product to the final customer. When business and the communities come together, I think first, word which comes to my mind is sustainability of that community and also sustainability of that business and that's what development is about. What I see on the ground and what is truly inspiring for me and I think for many others is that we see a mindset shift where thousands of smallholder farmers are now moving on from being uh, subsistence farmers to actually uh, uh, business people with a business mindset. This is what ACF is about and what our investments are about, to invest in innovative companies that can bring innovations to the uh, rural communities of Africa. I really feel that it's the young people that need to be a backbone of Zimbabwe so that they can um, work with their hands and, and change things. The most exciting thing has probably been to see the change in mind shifts, yeah? Uh, a good example of this is the old farmer, Mr. Dube, and I went to his farm and he came up to me and he said, oh, yeah, thank you so much, you saved me, you know? And I explained to him, actually, I haven't saved you at all. You're part of an amazing value chain and you're helping me. My business only exists because of you. 
uh, and to see the change in confidence and the sense that after that he was a new man who said like actually I'm not somebody people are helping because I'm poor, yeah. I'm somebody with worth and I'm adding value. Uh, seeing lives change, seeing communities change, seeing the production starting to move uh, has to be one of the most exciting things that we can do and see in life. Yeah, you've got the power. If you've got the way. 